All right, chip of the day. Everybody loves chip of the day. Um, this is an unusual one. Uh, this is made by a company called Curtis Electronic Music Specialties. Uh, Curtis made a lot of specialty analog chips for the music industry. And uh, this is one of the most famous ones, I think, the CEM3340. Now, this is a voltage-controlled oscillator. So every synthesizer in the 1980s <laughs> was uh, analog. And a lot of people still do analog synthesizers and a lot of DIY Euro rack and stuff. Synthesizers are, are, are needing voltage control oscillators. And this is, this is a chip that's chosen a lot. It's been in some really, really famous synthesizers, uh, the Prophet 5, the uh, Roland uh, uh, Jupiter 6, I think. Um, and you'd think, okay, well, you need one of them. No, you're, these are polyphonic synthesizers, so they can have like up to 22 of these chips in one, one unit. Uh, so you can play multiple, multiple uh, notes at the same time, having uh, multiple chips. So it's quite, a, it's quite an interesting chip, and it's great for my channel because it's all about analog circuitry um, uh, that we've been doing lately. So this was uh, sent into the channel by a viewer, and uh, he was building, I think, some synths at home, and he had an extra one, so he sent it to me and wanted me to do a chip of the day on it. So here we go. Thanks, thanks for the uh, donations. And um, so it is quite a complicated chip. There's a lot of stuff going on inside. And so we're going to go through that and uh, try to go through it and see what, what were all of the building blocks they put in this thing. Hopefully some will look familiar, some will not. Um, and uh, yeah, there was a lot of engineering that went, that went into this chip. So um, let, me, let, me, let me change pa piece of paper here. I have a, a larger printout and we'll go through this chip. All right, so first of all, the chip runs off of 15 volts, uh, 15 volts comes into pin, uh, let me back up just a little bit, 15 comes into pin 16, uh, ground is on pin 12. There's also a minus 15 supply, but we need to talk about that a little bit later. So uh, the first thing that we have here is a multiplier. So these things are voltage controlled oscillators. So you need to bring in some voltage and so you can do that with some resistors. So the keyboard has different resistors on it. So if you press it, you get different voltages. And uh, it's usually set up for one volt per octave, and you can set up, anyway, a whole bunch of stuff in synthesizers that we really don't need to know about. But basically, a voltage comes into this thing, and so we are going to, uh, we are going to have a voltage. And these, uh, if you ever build one uh, of analog synthesizers, one of the things that plagues you is drift. Um, and especially drift with temperature. And so this one has a special section down here that's a temperature compensation generator. So um, we're able to temperature compensate this thing by adding a little bit of circuitry at the bottom. Now the circuitry at the bottom is just uh, some resistors. So this thing has a circuit in it that kind of uh, does the opposite to what this does and it balances each other out with temperature. But it needs to be very, very stable and so they include a zener diode in here. So when you when you supply, this is where your this is where your negative 15 comes in, and it gets regulated to basically minus seven volts. And this minus seven volts is very accurate because of the zener. And then that temperature coefficient thing uh, operates off of off of that, and you can tune it here with some resistors and stuff. So that's what that does, and that's what the uh, zener diode is for. All right. So uh, we'll go back to the circuit here. Once we have this voltage, okay, we are there, we're going to use that voltage to set up a current, okay? And so we're going to set up a current uh, with this resistor here, okay? Sorry, uh, maybe I should just leave it zoomed out. Um, with this resistor here, that current, that voltage goes into this resistor, and that's going to set up a, a current through these uh, uh, transistors here, okay? Now, we are going to look at these as current mirrors as well. So, um, the way these are set up, this one uh, is, is four times the current, 
This one is four times the current. This one is only one times the current, but these are matched and so they track each other. And then that comes down here. And then we also have a current mirror here. CM is a current mirror. And that current mirror brings out a, a separate current um, that's a certain percentage of this out to a different pin. That's also used for compensation. That feeds back around to the input. And so that helps you track this thing as well because it's kind of unstable at high frequencies and stuff. So anyway, it has a feedback loop. Um, it's very complicated. So um, once we get a current, okay, we are going to, let's see here. We are going to take ground and this current into this op amp, okay? And we will have uh, this as a current mirror all situated, and we can change that current with, with the voltages. So that's our voltage controlled current source, okay? That's gonna come around here. It's gonna go into a switch, okay? So we can either do one thing or the other thing, and it goes into a current mirror. So what does that mean? Well. It means that we can set it up into a positive current or a negative current. That's what this one is doing. Positive current, negative current, positive current, negative current, depending on how you have this set, okay? So our current comes in the bottom and we can either direct it to the positive side or to the negative side, depending on some switching circuitry. But what do we do with that current? Well, we put that current into this capacitor uh, and this capacitor in this situation is a thousand picofarad. So current, goes into a capacitor, which means you have a linear slope, right? A current into a capacitor is a straight line. And so we will start to charge this capacitor up along the straight line. And when it reaches a certain point, we're gonna flip the whole thing over, okay? So uh, when we flip the whole thing over, that's when this comparator fires, that comparator changes the switch and it says, okay, instead of plus currents, we want minus currents. So this thing's gonna go up until it hits a particular point around five volts, and then it's gonna start going down again, and then it'll go up again and down again and up again. So this is a, 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 a ramp generator, okay? And this, this uh, ramp generator is done with this positive current, negative current. Uh, the, the output of that uh, voltage on that capacitor is buffered, and this comes out. So this is usable Okay, so that's one of the outputs is this triangle wave here, all right? Now that triangle wave comes down over here, all right? And um, let's see, it is going to get compared with a particular voltage, okay? So if it's charging up, it's gonna be compared to this voltage, which is 14K and 7K, all right? So when it gets up to, this is five volts, when it gets up to five volts, okay, then the comparator will fire. At five volts, it will tell this comparator to fire and will flop to the negative side. And then when it starts ramping down, both of these flop, right? So these are switches, they, 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 they change. So when it's ramping down, this is now into this uh, location. And now this comparator is looking for zero. And when that ramp comes all the way down to zero, then this comparator fires and then the thing flops again. So it's going to go flip, flop, flip, flop, flip, flop, ramp up, ramp down, ramp up, ramp down, compare it to five volts or compare it to ground. So that's the way that one works. All right. Now we can also just take half of that and we can turn it into triangle. So we're just looking at the, uh, uh, the uh, up and then down and then immediately up again and then down. That's what this one does. And, uh, we get a ramp up to 10 volts and then boom, bang, it goes down. Ramp up to 10 volts, then bang. So that's the output here. I talked about the high frequency tracking. I really don't know much about that, but it brings it around all the way to the input again to, to balance things out, make sure it's more stable than it is. There's a couple things you can also do. You can run it into another comparator and that other comparator is set here to to uh, seven and a half volts, 14 and 14 K. So half of half of 15 volts. And so you can compare that and you can set up a pulse width modulation control. All right. And so it takes this, this sawtooth wave here and it divides it by two. All right. So actually this is zero to 10 volts. So this is going to be five volts here. And then whatever voltage you have 
on pin five, that will trigger it and you can change it into a pulse, pulse width. So you can use this to generate pulses as well. So uh, ramps, uh, triangles, ramps, and pulse width. Um, you can also, when you're up here generating that ramp, you can also uh, introduce a little bit of wobble uh, into this node here and this will set an FM modulation. You can wiggle the frequency back and forth by changing that voltage. Um, and so that's available to you there. So it's a, it's a quite it's a quite a versatile chip. I can see why people want to use it. Um, it did make those synthesizers quite expensive. These are not cheap chips. <laughs> and having 22 of them in a synthesizer, yeah, it's gonna get, that's why those, those, those old synthesizers were so much money. Um, yeah, so let's hook one up. Uh, I have most of this connected, but uh, enough to get a, 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 a waveform on the screen and we'll see what, see if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. All right, here's my little circuit I have wired up and uh, we can take a look at that, uh, that ramp triangle wave there. Um, and so it's going up, going down. This is ground and we're at one volt per division. So one, two, three, four, five, about 5.2 volts and then up and down, up and down, up and down. And uh, I have a little potentiometer on the input so I can do the voltage control. And you can see that, whoa, 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 whoa. I can, uh, I can, change, the, uh, I can change the frequency. And uh, let's see here, what else can we look at? Um, we have the other uh, output, which was pin eight. Pin eight should give us a, so two, four, six, eight, ten. It's got a little glitch there, crossover distortion at that glitch and a little bit of glitch there. So these things are not glitch free, but in synthesizers, you don't care. You really don't care because you're wanting to use this to generate harmonics and stuff anyway, make it sound like a synthesizer and not like a sine wave. And so these little glitches just don't matter. They'll get buffered out and they're probably, maybe they're past, uh, audible range anyway. So actually, uh, once it makes it to the circuit, you probably won't even know they're there. I think these days they go for about $9 or something like that. Uh, there's a couple companies who make them now. All right, there you go. Chip of the day was a CEM, Curtis Electronic Music Specialties, a 3340 voltage controlled oscillator.